Haruki Murakami is known as one of those authors who are hard to adapt onto film. This is for a number of reasons. The ethereal atmosphere of his stories, the long expository nature of characters in her monologues, and even the skepticism of adaptations from Murakami himself. Him saying in 1990 to the New York Times that it's okay for a book to be a book. That isn't to say that he hasn't been adapted. A number of his novels and short stories have, including an indie video game adaptation that I was very startled to learn the existence of. Of the adaptations that I have seen, 2010's Norwegian Wood was at times effective at portraying Murakami's mood on screen, if maybe a bit sloppy at parts. There's also Burning, a 2018 South Korean adaptation of another Murakami short story which deserves similar praise to the film we'll be discussing ahead. Director Ryusuke Hamaguchi knew what he was getting into. In one of the many articles discussing the difficulties of such a project, he even outright stated, Fundamentally, I don't think Murakami's works are made for adaptations. So when he was posed with the offer to adapt Murakami, he didn't accept immediately. But after some back and forth, he agreed, as long as it was the short story Drive My Car. This was a wise move for a number of reasons. For one, compared to many of Murakami's other works, it's fairly straightforward. Clocking in at just under 40 pages, it's mainly centered around conversations between a widowed actor named Kafuku and his young driver Misaki. They muse on life and grief, and talk plainly about the dread that comes with being a human. Regular Murakami stuff, really. So would it be considered alarming to discover Hamaguchi's adaptation of this short story? Had a runtime of 2 hours and 59 minutes? Well. Maybe, but I'm sure if you've read Murakami or are familiar with Hamaguchi's other films, perhaps not. The former stories, whether short or long, have this immersive effect that bends time, often literally as the characters are experiencing some form of unreality, so following their thoughts can stretch the process of us comprehending it. As for Hamaguchi, his seminal work, Happy Hour, a film about the friendship between four women, comes in at more than 5 hours long, which is daunting and scared me when I realized I had to watch it to research this video, but wound up becoming a film a kind of treasure. It's sincerely the quickest 5 hours I've ever spent doing one thing. I'd recommend it to anyone. Regarding Drive My Car, the film, not the story, it absolutely adds a lot more plot to the original to justify the runtime. We get a whole prologue of time Kafuku spends with his wife more depth in the backstory of Misaki, and even the little criminal intrigue somewhere in the middle. But the film is still very, very faithful, maintaining focus on the conversations of Kafuku and Misaki as they drive. And it is this aspect that Hamaguchi says is what led him to choose it as the one to adapt. Having conversations within the car itself, I think, is something that lends itself to being cinematic because you have something that is actually moving. This is obvious when watching the film itself. A lot of the alluring cinematography is quite literally focused on this little red car navigating the city of Hiroshima, some showing where it's going, others keeping the car centered as we ride with it and the characters. One of the more obvious changes Hamaguchi made to the original text was the color of the car for this very reason. In the original short story, the car was yellow but he changed it to red to remain stark in the many landscape shots of the film. But it's not just visually appealing filmmaking that makes this film a good adaptation. I think that lies in how watching it gives the same feeling that reading Murakami does, while still managing to be its own thing. In conversations regarding adaptations, the most frequent topic brought up I find is accuracy, which is fair. If you've been a fan of something for a while, it would make sense that when you see it being adapted, you'd be able to see in it the things that you held so dear about the source represented. But they can never be perfect, and that's the nature of portraying a story in different mediums. Douglas Adams, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, adapted his story into multiple formats. In fact, this novel that he became most famous for was originally written to be a radio drama for the BBC. Regarding adapting between mediums, Adams had this to say, Moving something from one medium to another is very interesting. It's a lot like carrying a picture, 
or a piece of clothing from one bit of lighting to another, suddenly it looks very different. What interests me a bit further down the line is the way in which the different media interrelate. You can hand things off from one to another. You can exploit each other's strengths and weaknesses. Murakami seemed acutely aware of this too. In an email to Hamaguchi, he wrote, When my work is adapted, my wish is for the plot and dialogue to be changed freely. There is a big difference between the way a piece of literature develops and how a film develops. In this regard, Hamaguchi added plenty to the events and dialogue that occur in Drive My Car. Namely, he incorporated elements from two other stories in the collection that contains the original short story, Men Without Woman, these other two being Scheherazade and Kino. He also incorporated many aspects of the play Uncle Vanya by Anton Chekhov. In the original Drive My Car, Uncle Vanya is mentioned in passing by Kafuku as the play he is acting in that required Misaki to be his driver. In the film, his role is stretched out to that of the stage director, and we spend a lot of time with him and the other actors as they work through the blocking, giving us as the audience a lot of the actual plot of Uncle Vanya. This was a powerful choice. As if you're familiar with Uncle Vanya, it mirrors a lot of Drive My Car and the ongoing struggles of the characters and the reality they find themselves in. There's also the neat aspect that the production Kafuku is overseeing in the film is multilingual, meaning that the various actors in the play speak and will be presenting in different languages. Beside the coolness factor of this, it also ties into the theme of communication central to the film's plot. We'll come back to that. Even with the additions of Uncle Vanya and aspects from the other stories, the film is still honest to the original's characters, while adding depth to their experiences and wisdom resulting from it. More specifically, the nature and even the actual sequences of Kafuku and Misaki's relationship remains more or less the same, but more is given to us regarding them. Upon first meeting, Kafuku is unhappy with Misaki's place in his life. He would rather drive his own car, and is overtly critical of others driving. For reasons outside of his control, he has to resort to being driven by Misaki. And her driving his car is what allows him to better reach a deeper honesty within himself. Misaki is an incredible driver, and her easing the anxiety surrounding that aspect of his life is what leads to him opening up. There's also additions to Misaki herself. While Murakami is allotted author the world over, he has received his fair share of criticisms for his portrayal of female characters in his works. He's been criticized as being navel-gazy, and guilty of using female characters solely as means of development for male characters. I may not be the right person to discuss this in detail, so I'll defer you to a portion of an excellent conversation Murakami has with fellow author Mieko Kawakami, in which she directly confronts the writer about these things. It's a real good read, and I think it says a lot about meeting our heroes and the ability to critique those we look up to. I'll link it below. With this in mind, it's worth commending Hamaguchi's adaptation of Misaki, as he added much more agency to her in this film, which is to be expected of a director who made a five-hour film about female friendship. Really, go see Happy Hour. It's very good. We are given much more of Misaki's backstories and motivations. What makes her a good driver, what makes her so serious and quiet, even an arc of her own that mirrors Kafuku's own struggles with grief. The depth of her and Kafuku's relationship is made all the more apparent when compared to that of the characters Vanya and Sanya from Chekhov's play, which both Murakami and Hamaguchi definitely took cues from. It's also worth applauding that the relationship is never implied to be romantic or even to be going in that direction. These are two broken people trying to navigate their lives after tragedy, and both have wisdom to impart on the other as to how to approach it. And this brings us back to the topic of communication and what it is to really know someone. If the book or film is about anything, it's about the conversations between Kafuku and Misaki while she drives his car, and what that really means to have her do so. The car is Kafuku's safe place, and to have it literally taken out of his hands shakes how he lives his life. What surprises him all the more when he grows to trust the person who took his safe place from him, Misaki. The aspects of the production Kafuku is working on reflects this as well. Most of the other actors don't speak the same language, 
so they have to figure out creative ways to communicate their lines to each other. There's a figurative wall between each of them that they have to overcome to understand each other. Communication has always been an issue in Kafuku's life, and it's his primary struggle throughout the film, be it struggling with communicating in his professional life, his struggle to communicate with his now-deceased wife Oto, or his struggle to communicate and be honest with himself. This of course all leads into the old adage, how can you know someone if you don't know yourself? Through the lens of Kafuku, he and us begin to see how others overcome these figurative walls, and that they are just that, imaginary. Proof of this exists in both the short story and the film. The penultimate line in both is delivered by the person with which perhaps Kafuku has the most difficult relationship within his life, a man who by all intents and purposes he should despise on a deeply human level. Also adding to the importance of said line is that in the film it is delivered in the moving car, the place sacred to both Kafuku and Misaki. The weight of what this man says precedes the harsh truth he inhabits in Kafuku's life. So, what about the title? Well, Murakami obviously took it from the title of the Beatles song. Murakami is kind of a savant when it comes to Western music, and you'll often find aspects of songs and artists in many of his works. And I think in this case, there's more to it than that. And I think Hamaguchi knew that too, as he suggests in the actual closing moments of the film. But I won't spoil it here. Instead, I'll leave you here with a quote from the book itself. If we hope to truly see another person, we have to start by looking within ourselves. And although Kafuku has trouble understanding this, I think he perhaps gets ever so slightly closer by allowing someone else to drive his car. <laughs>